New York Times opinion columnist David Brooks ruffled some feathers when he tweeted this chart called the crisis of masculinity. One respondent accused Brooks of, quote, promoting a professor who believes that universities are engaged in gender discrimination. Joining us via Skype with his take and to discuss whether or not there really is a masculinity crisis is host of The Jamie Kilstein Show, Jamie Kilstein himself. Great to see you, sir. Hey guys, I wore my very manly Muhammad Ali shirt instead of my very early cat shirt that I was wearing before we started taping. And what does that say about the, the crisis of masculinity? Hold on a second. Before, before you answer that, what your T-shirt says about masculinity, um, let's put the chart back up just so people can get a little bit of a longer look at it. So this was put together by, I don't remember the guy's name, over at American Enterprise Institute. And it basically says for every hundred girls or women, this is the number of equivalent men. So you have for every hundred women who are who take AP honors courses in math, only 82 men are doing the same. And then at the other end of the spectrum, for every 100 girls or women who die by opioid overdose, you have 212 men who die. Now, look. Let me say, as a feminist, that this, you know, clearly ignores the fact that men dominate business, they dominate government, they dominate decision-making, et cetera, et cetera. But I think you also have to say that there is something going on with men who are not elites, who are struggling in a lot of ways in this economy. Jamie, what do you—I mean, what do you—when you look at this chart, how do you think about it? Yeah, so, first of all, Crystal, of course you don't know his name, because all men are the same, right? Uh, <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah, I I want to look at it from, like, two sides, right? I feel like when I used to be super, super uh, only on the left, only talk to people on the left, anytime David Brooks's name came up, I would just not read the article and just tweet something terrible about him, right? But I think that it's really important that the left is open-minded uh, about articles like this. However, I'm gonna trash it. So the problem, when the right talks about masculinity and when uh, a lot of times when they talk about problems with men, they don't just talk about problems with men. For some weird reason, they have to completely throw women under the bus, right? So the, the, the only people who end up talking about these legitimate uh, problems when it comes to suicide or when it comes to opioid addiction um, are sort of these like terrible men's rights people on like the dregs of the internet um, when they are real issues. And I think a lot of people on the left don't want to talk about this problem because they don't want to be seen as not caring about women's issues. So what happens is you have, let's say an article comes out about um, uh, sexual assault like the, the high numbers of sexual assault when it comes to women. That's suddenly when these men will come out uh, and be like, well, why aren't you talking about sexual assault with men? And it's like, well, we will, but it doesn't have to be this horrible, like sexual assault contest. Right. Um, we should talk about how both of these are terrible, but then what happens is on the left, the left is so afraid just to tweet something about, wow, you know, uh, there, there's a crazy problem with men and suicide, because then left-wing Twitter will be like, well, why aren't we talking about all these problems with women and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, guys, it shouldn't be a competition at all. I think the framing of it makes it so we don't talk about men's issues as much on the left. If that. Yeah, because it's it's a oppression Olympics is the framing, right? Like it's saying men have it worse than women. You know, why does it have to be like a competition here? Right? Yeah, and Jamie, forget just talking about it, right? Because you're right. So much of the issue here is how we frame this. What should we do about this, right? Because I think the issue here we're talking about men, but it seems if we look at a lot of these facts, they're about boys, they're about young men, they're about people who are in school, yeah, people sure. who are children. What do you think we could be doing, whether it's sort of the government or parents, to actually affect these issues? No, it's a great question. And I mean, unfortunately, this is gonna, and this is part of the problem. I'm almost afraid to say it because it's gonna sound like a super right wing talking point. But we have to like recognize that young men have problems and that young men uh, are scared like young girls are and that uh, puberty is terrifying for everybody. And we need to teach young men about confidence. And you can't, you can't treat them as the enemy until they're the enemy, right? Like, I think you have to raise. Uh, men and women uh, and educate them and, and, and teach them how to be confident, but also empathetic and loving, right? There's this problem where we see masculinity as it can only be 
Like on the left, I think when I hear the word masculinity on the in a political term, I think of toxic masculinity, right? I think of Brent Stevenson screaming at, 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 at a hearing. And when in reality, <laughs> I've had a lot of really wonderful male role models in my life when it comes to like uh, jujitsu or training mixed martial arts and like uh, uh, teaching me things that are important that would be considered masculine. But the other side to that is you also have to teach young men uh, empathy and vulnerability and being able to share their feelings. You know, there are lots of men issues we don't talk about. And when every time, and again, this article, the framing of it, to be very clear, so stupid. But when people on the left and when young men see the left just trashing articles that talk about uh, suicide and opioid crisis and, and stuff like that, they're going to be more nervous to do the thing that a lot of women want men to do, right? Which is like express their feelings, be vulnerable, talk about these issues because now not only are they scared to share their uh, emotions, but they also like, they don't want to be called, they don't want to make it seem like they don't care about women's issues. Yeah. Um, but now talking about it, and by the way, if you're a liberalist, that's what's driving a lot of young men over to the kind of Jordan Peterson world is because right. what happens is, they have everywhere they go on the left. It says that you know being a man is bad. There aren't a ton of people who are openly male role models. Um, so then they see someone like Jordan Peterson, who like guys. When I looked up Jordan Peterson, I was like, uh, I was expecting just him to be in full like Nazi regalia, like from everything. <laughs> I and I like go to YouTube him, and he's like, you should make your bed. And I'm a 37 year old man, and I'm like, I should make my bed. This guy's <laughs> making. And I got so into Jordan Peterson. And then the YouTube algorithm was like, hey, if you like Jordan Peterson, make the bed. You'll love Ben Shapiro chases a trans person out of the country. And it's like, I don't I don't want that. Um, but when the only people talking about these masculine traits and, and teaching young men how to be confident um, are on the right, we're, we're, we're going to have a lot more young men go to the right. Well, and like, I think the reality is we have a culture that sets very rigid expectations for women and very rigid expectations for men. And for men, what you are told as, you know, every part of our culture tells you from the time you're a little boy is that to be a real man, you're a provider, right? You go out there, you provide for your family, that's your role as a man. And then we create an economy where that's almost impossible to do, right? Where you've watched your father or your grandfather have a good job, a union job, where they could support the family, where the wife didn't have to work if she didn't want to, could raise the kids if they wanted to. And that's just not available to you anymore. So how do you deal with that. I mean, to me, that's sort of the deeper issue here where, look, the, the kind of neoliberal economic consensus that we have here, it's not good for women and it's also not been good for men. I think that's the reality that the left needs to be able to talk about. I love that you found a way to bring this to neoliberalism. That was like incredible to watch. <laughs> where, yeah, you're totally right. Um, and this is something that everybody should come together on. And this is what's frustrating when you see articles like that from, was this one like the American Enterprise Institute? Again, yeah. yeah. They're all, um, the, this is the problem, right? Where you're like, okay, so if we're going to talk about these issues, why are we framing it as, you know, look at the opioid crisis with men it does, it, while all these, like, th that article makes it seem like, you know, all these women are just sitting in their, like, AP science classes laughing while men are overdosing for no reason because we're just, like, dummies. Um, when in reality, it's like, well, a lot, the, the people putting out this study, it's like, what are you doing to make sure that there are more jobs in America? Like, what are you doing to actually help these men? And a lot of times, look, this is the problem with, tribalism and uh, th this sort of social media toxicity in general, where everybody is thrilled to throw out statistics that match their agenda, but they're doing nothing to solve the problem. If and that's you what actually, we have to really do. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, if you actually care about the suicide rate of men, like Crystal was saying, provide them jobs. Yeah, some meanings of dignity. It's not really that complicated. Jamie, it's always great to see you. Great to have your voice on this. Great to have you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.
Next up on Rising, with the Q4 fundraising numbers out, where does each candidate stand going into the Iowa caucuses? A conversation with our colleague, Hill reporter Julia Manchester, on all things fundraising when Rising continues.